Danganronpa is a story revolving around the students of Hope's Peak Academy, a high school composed of ultimates, or students with a tremendous gift or skill, being trapped within the school and forced into a killing game by a murderous bear called Monokuma. If a student is killed and the body is discovered, a class trial is held, in which the remaining students must discuss amongst themselves who the murderer is. If they can successfully figure out who murdered the victim, the culprit alone will be executed. However, if they guess incorrectly, the culprit will be able to leave the school and everyone else will be executed instead. Since nobody is being forced to kill anyone, all the students live in peace and harmony, respecting the value of each other's lives and cooperating to reach a common goal. I'm just kidding. They start killing each other real fast. Between the ever enticing motives given by Monokuma and the stress and boredom of being stuck inside for months on end. Sound familiar? Things tend to get murdery real fast. But what would you do if you were one of the students stuck in the killing game at Hope's Peak Academy? What would be the best way of going about surviving? Would you be able to do whatever it takes to get out alive? To avoid too many endgame spoilers, we're not going to be discussing what would come after the end of the game. Rather, our focus will just be on winning the game. Luckily, chances are you wouldn't be in the game to begin with. If you're sitting here watching this video, chances are you aren't the ultimate anything. And before you ask, no, you're not the ultimate nerd, or procrastinator, or sleeper, since I'm all three of those. However, there just so happens to be one slot open for somebody without any ultimate talents, the ultimate lucky student. So, let's say you're it. How do we beat this? Let's go with the obvious choice. Murder. According to Monokuma, all you need to do is murder at least one person and get someone else blamed for it to win the game. Depending on how much empathy you have, or alternatively, how much you enjoy browsing the internet, this could be your first or last option. With the number of players in the game theoretically going down by at least two for each trial, the odds of surviving just gets lower and lower each day. So this is one of those times where you really need to strike when the iron is hot, and by that I mean kill fast and kill clean. If you're going with the murder option, you want to do it as soon as possible when there are as many suspects and the least common knowledge about each person. Additionally, you want people to know the least amount about you, so make your presence known by your interests and intentions unknown. You don't want to be a shadowy figure, but you want yourself to be seen as your average person, no more likely to commit murder than any other person. If you want to be a little cheeky, make yourself out to be an utter oaf. More on that later. Step 1. Get strapped. There are plenty of weapons scattered throughout Hope's Peak. Think kitchen knives, heavyweights, chemicals, just to name a few. Step 2. Find your prey. And as far as criteria for a victim, you want someone who plenty of people would have no problem offing. Basically someone who's a dick. But be sure you can actually kill the person. It would be really embarrassing if you ambush someone who's unarmed but still get overpowered and killed. I doubt that would ever happen though. Memorize that person's schedule. Know when they're with people and when they're alone. What they eat, if they leave their drink unattended, the like. Are they dumb enough to leave their door unlocked? Things like that. The best situation if you're planning on some merry murder is to wait until everyone is given a motive. You being you, no offense. It's highly unlikely you'll be given a compelling motive to kill someone as opposed to some others. Given that, if you make your lack of motive known amongst some of the others, they would be far less likely to expect you. Again, strike when the iron's hot. Step 3. Execute. Since nobody has access to forensic equipment or anything of that nature, and the soundproofing in each private room, there aren't too many things you need to worry about. Be sure you're not seen entering or leaving the seed, make sure you're not visibly bloody, and if possible, have an alibi. Make your presence known before the murder and then as quickly as possible, make sure people see you as part of a group after. This can backfire really, really badly if you have any trace of blood or any cuts, bruises, etc. on you, so you can't be sloppy about it. If you can get access to a poncho or raincoat to take off after the murder, that would be ideal. I'll stop being too specific about this process to avoid being put on any watch list. Just be creative, but not too creative. One thing to take note of is that a small nudge in the wrong direction can go a long way. For example, is one of your classmates the ultimate hockey star? Maybe use a hockey stick as a weapon, lead the scent right towards them. If you're smart in execution, that might be their only lead and your golden ticket to freedom. Step 4. Play it cool. This is most certainly easier said than done. Just to clarify, I'm not saying this from experience, I've never actually blended in with a crowd. Remember, you're just as shocked and confused as everyone else. You had no more of a motive to kill that person than anyone else, so if you did everything right, there's a minuscule chance you'll become the prime suspect immediately. Earlier, if you committed to the idiot persona, that's the best case scenario, as you'd be expected to have nothing to add. When the trial comes around, just keep your mouth shut. With 14 other people in a scramble to try to figure out who done it, nobody will notice your silence or creepy, all-according-to-plan smile. 
The worst thing you do is have a slip of the tongue and say something you shouldn't know, as it basically happens in every other trial. Chances are, only a few people will be dominating the conversation anyway, so again, nobody will have any reason to suspect you above anyone else. If asked directly for any input, go with the flow and bandwagon on whoever the prime suspect is. There will likely be some complications, but it's all about keeping calm. But not too calm, because that would be suspicious. Calm enough, you know. Even if things look dicey, all it takes is a little bit of luck. Step 5. All according to plan. Once everyone has voted, be sure to laugh maniacally as Monokuma reveals that they were all wrong, and are thus doomed. Congratulations! And now, you can supposedly return to your happy life back at home with absolutely nothing changing. Yep. Now that we covered the killing option, let's take a look at the not-so-fun, and from my point of view, ironically much riskier option, not doing murder. This is obviously the more passive approach, but there are some rules you absolutely must follow if you want to make it out alive. Rule number one. Stay strapped. Generally, people would be much less likely to go after you if they knew you had even a slight chance of turning the tables. Again, the knives are in the kitchen. Turning the tables is a last resort, however, as your chances of getting away with a self-defense killing would be much lower than a premeditated one. If you find yourself on the wrong end of the sword, try to just escape and warn the others. If it comes to it though, a small chance of getting out is better than no chance. Rule number two, do not under any circumstances, agree to meet with someone in private. It is an obvious invitation to kill you, so just don't. When you meet someone, if you feel the need to, make sure it's in a public space and your meeting is accounted for. If everyone knows you're meeting X person, X person theoretically is much less likely to thrust a sharp object into your person's. I seriously have no idea how so many people just accept these shady invitations without telling anyone. Rule number three, follow the rules. And I don't mean the rules I've been laying out, I mean the ones the scary bear which can easily kill you gave you. If these ultimates can't take them on, you sure as hell can't either. Rule number four, lay low. Don't make yourself a target by popping off in a class trial, that will make you the first choice for murder. You are a potential target for anyone and everyone else, since if you have no enemies, there would be an equal amount of suspicion on each person if you wound up dead, making you a very promising potential corpse. Rule number five, don't be a hero. If you do some heroics in a class trial and figure out who the killer is, anyone with a good mind for murder would want you dead so you don't get the chance to thwart their plans. Leave the heavy lifting to the ultimates. Let them be the targets. You just want to leave in one piece. Seems simple, right? Well, statistically, you probably wouldn't make it out. Let's say 15 people, at least two people less per trial, and you are a very easy target. The people going after you have special skills which you do not, and you'll likely find yourself in a trap you never saw coming. The odds are definitely not in your favor, and the only thing you'd have going for you is your luck. But who knows, maybe that's all it would take. These are my tips on surviving a Danganronpa killing game. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of them, and if you have any other ideas for surviving, please leave them in the comments, and be sure to be creative if you do. Be sure to check out my other videos, in the last one I analyzed some of the chess and code Gias, and I have another Danganronpa video on my channel talking about Saika Maizono, the ultimate pop sensation, and doing a character profile on her, so be sure to check that one out. And if you want to see more, do subscribe. I still don't know how to end this video.